Cause God to reign on now Ministry in the world of life To the weak to give them strength To the blind to make them see True Christ who strengthens me I am something, I am a light A royal priest to lonely nation And hear of God So call me kingdom time you're welcome again to Kingdom Stars on Ogongo TV. Kingdom Stars is a show where you meet different drama ministers as they discuss about themselves. They share their testimonies with us. Please, I want you to subscribe to this channel. Yes, do that now. Subscribe now. And click the notification bell so that anytime we upload anything new, you'll see it. I also want you to like our videos because if you subscribe to this channel and you click the notification bell and you like my videos and share them, it's an encouragement. So encourage me by doing this. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you. Yeah, to the business of the day, Kingdom Stars. Our guest on today's program shall be I am a kingdom star I was called to reign on now ministry in the world of life to the weak to give them strength to the blind to my name is Tolu Alokwe Charles Adebo um, I'm from Undo State Undo Town precisely I reside in Ibadan presently Jericho I am a drama minister and um, a graduate of agricultural engineering. Um, I'm married. Uh -huh. Yes, I'm married. And presently, I'm a full time minister. Presently, um, I'm also the director of um, When Men Pray International Prayer Network. And um, I also co run. An, an initiative with my wife, the Rebuke Girls Network, an outreach to um, teenage girls and youth in general. I, I could say I had um, a, a, an humble start, you know. Um, my family was just an average family, and um, I, I am the third born, anyways, the third born, the second boy, the third born. My family used to be a family of drama ministers. I went to St. Sabel Private School um, for my elementary education and um, from there I moved over to Atonda International High School that's in Oluyole. Then um, from there I had a stint with Leeds City. That's one of the challenges in any ways because along the line I lost my dad and all that so it was a bit tough for us in the house. So then I switched over to um, College of Agriculture where I did agriculture cultural engineering and then um, after that of course proceeded for youth service and all and I served as the state transport and organizing secretary for NCCF um, when I went for service in Quara State and um, of course well my journey into drama ministry um, we've We've always acted drama. I've always acted drama, you know, way back from um, primary school. I remember that when I was in Sensor, we went, we do go for com competitions, and then, of course, we went for one like that where we did KBKB cricket. I can't forget because that day was, was actually memorable. I was uh, very sick and I had to take the lead role. Well, it all started from there. Glory be to God. I left drama. I was more into um, musical instruments and all that. I was a drummer. I used to be a drummer. Anyways, I love music a whole lot. But then I didn't see drama come in any ways, you know, because, well, I didn't really have left for it like that as I was growing. But then um, I just found myself in a church. I, from my own, my, my home church, I attend Getsmani Primary Street. And, um, but I found myself in that partner church for just um, three years, anyways. Uh, for ministerial, you know, and trainees and all that. 
and then right in that church i noticed that the youth were not you know doing well like they should they were supposed to do and they were more the the their issue was more on the heart of the general vassal and all that so i felt the leading to put the youth together so i started the drama um department of the church as well as the youth fellowship of the church so it was while presenting dramas you know often and often then that the shagumba did to come around that church for um, more like a member of the church then, even though we know that he's going to mission works and all. So then he do see me, you know, um, acting and all that. And then he spoke up a bit. He walked up to me and, you know, spoke to me about this drama ministry of a thing. I, I didn't really get the whole picture anyways, but then they were organizing a training. They had school anyways, and then I attended, did both their basic and advanced and all. And that was how I started out um, on this drama um, ministry thing and well I don't really think I have um, you know records of you know challenges and all but I remember that um, when I first started out, it was very difficult, you know. Um, even men of God that you look up to, just you know. Sometimes when I say I'm going for location, it'd be like just sit down there, you're on training here, yeah, blah, and all that. And sometimes when I return, they'd be like, "What did they give you?" Yeah. So they didn't give me anything. No. They'd be like, "You see now." And that's how, you know, just talking the drama ministry down. And I think that was one of the major challenges I really faced. That I can say. I, I really feel because even families and friends are like, what are you doing? You know, all those things and all that. But I had a strong conviction that God has called me into the um, drama ministry. And that's what I do tell people that, especially those who messages me or who, you know, wants to know about this drama ministry thing and all that. I feel like telling them that the first thing is to be fully convinced that God has called you into, you know, the ministry. Because even not for the conviction, you know, all the all the side talks and all that would have put me down. But I thank God, here yeah, am I today. Uh, the my first movie is um, Taking the Bullet, at which I was the main I was the main cast of that movie. Um, that was um, 2015. And that's um, under the Gibeons and um, um, motion pictures. Um, that was my first. And then, of course, I counting, I've acted, by the grace of God, anyways, well, close to 60 movies so far. By God's grace, sincerely, I must tell you because if I say this is this is how I do things, I I might not be that accurate. I just give all the glory to God, and then two, um, time management is very important. Too, yeah, when like okay, for instance, last week somebody called my wife. And the problem was I telling her that the person did not know I was there. I was telling her that this was why. The guy who they stay house now, I know that if he doesn't have administration, he has a drama, he has a film location and all that, all that like that, you know. And my wife replied the person and told the person that see, when my husband is at home, he's fully at home. The truth is when I'm around, I'm fully around. I won't go anywhere. I'll just be indoors and make sure that I spend my time with her and then of course do other things that I really need to do. It has been it, it well, for extended families, maybe, I, maybe there's no time, you know, to mingle and all that, but God is helping us in all this. And financially, God has been very faithful. That's the truth. He has been very, very faithful. That's what I can say. Well, I, I would say that, number one, Christian drama to me is not business, it's it's ministry. So in view of that, I I don't have any plan to go to to go into secular. No, not at all. I don't. I walk I walk the field of souls 
And one of my slogans is that God give me soul or I die. I don't say in essence why I should leave if I don't win souls over to the kingdom of God. It has always been my watchword everywhere on my page and all that. Lord give me soul or I die. So I see drama, um, Christian drama as an avenue to preach the gospel, not for popularity, fame or money. So, but then God has been faithful. Even while there is no money, God has been very, very faithful. That's, and then he knows how best to pay us back. The, the song I sing most times when it comes to, is, I, I love this song, this last song so much. This, um, um, you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh. I, I, I could sing it anywhere in the house while worshiping. There's, there's one Yoruba song that um, people that know me knows that I love that Yoruba song so much anywhere. Anytime it's Jesu, 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 Baba, oh, Baba, oh, Jesu, I should roll call you, be a giri, big bear, Jesu. I love that song so much, but for that rap one, I like it. Maybe when I'm walking or something, that I'm a F A N A T I T. I rep Christ till I die, that is, I rep Christ till I die. When 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 I'm stressed and I want to relax, um, I want to sound to. I like to, I like I like to have my time. I like to sleep. I like to be indoors. I'm a very indoor person. I don't go out like that. So I like to just lie down, not listening to music. I like everywhere silent. Um, the truth is, is because of my love for music when they are playing it or something i would not relax i might be my mind might be following it and then i'll not be able to go i like everywhere being silent and have my time sleeping most probably or praying i don't want to mention it for after my hobby is number one is um Praying, I love to pray. I love, I love that so much to pray. And um, acting is also very good. I love acting. And then, um, of course, sometimes I I like to, you know, do some few exercises. I I used to love football, so but oh my god. I love it as an hobby exercise. One of my hobbies is I love this thing with my wife. We we, we talk a lot to be in network sales. You know. One of it was maybe the day that um, God called me to when I used to be called into full time ministry because I had a lot of plans and a lot of things I really want to do, even though some 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 people I don't want to mention them were like, are you serious about <laughs> that God has called you to full time? Are, are, are you serious? How are you going to you know cope and do this and do that? And even some are still on me for some things that they thought I was still going to do, which I don't know if God will permit, I will, but if not, I think I, I felt so bad. I felt like it was that period was was a big struggle. Well, it was a very big struggle until I eventually yielded. And even when I yielded, I went through some terrible experiences, some tough wilderness experiences that um but thank God. Because I know that in those in those seasons, that's where men are forged, and you no, know, I really thank God. Yeah, my to do. So my highest moment. I, I think there are so many ones, but the one that gladdens my heart so much is um, how do I put it now? Let me say my highest moments are just 
the time when I'm able to, you know, preach the gospel and win the soul over to, to Christ. I mean, that, and I have a series of that. And that's when I'm fully, you know, everything. And then my wedding day too was, ah, hey, can watch the video. Well, um, ministerially, when it comes to the pastorate or pulpit, I have um, Reverend Isaac Omolen and Daddy Isaac Omolen as my Lord, as my father. And then, of course, I cannot but say that Daddy Moses Arsola also is my father because um, my spiritual journey started from Ketsmane Prime Ministries and I've drunk so much from him. Uh, the two of them, a man can have two fathers anyways, but I think the two of them are, and there are many other mentors, many mentors, they might, they might, they might not be known people, and mentors. but in drama ministry, I would pick, aside from that Mike Bamboo, I would pick that Yemi Adepoju. Um, we have this strong bond as a son. Um, son father relationship that the end of the um daddy shagun body job who god used you know to discover to discover me let me just put it that way because i was just i've been doing church drama or maybe somebody else must have been but i just want to turn them to their they are my my Well, um, next few years, we already we, we started working on something, extra measures, you know, motion pictures, myself, my wife, and a group of people, group of Christians, born again, they're working on that. In the next few years, of course, there will be, um, there will be a film production coming by the grace of God, and then, of course, I, many drama outreaches, you know, drama concerts, like, We've never had before, and then more attitudes to the um, teenagers you know, to help with my wife's um, ministry. My wife, I when I first met her, um, we met her to a, a program. Um, that year, very long time ago, very, very long time ago, I was putting on a gold chain that was given to me by someone. And then we, we just met at that program. We just talked a little about it, found that. Because our dad is, is also a general of ourselves in church in the background. So, and I used to know our dad from my father. So I was like, oh, maybe your dad or not. But she so wasn't that, because of that chain thing, you know, and, you know, and you know, that fateful day she spoke about that chain, even though that was the first time we met. And that was the day, that was the last day I wore a chain. It's a very, very long time ago. That was the last day I wore a chain. Not because, because after that time, I think we met again, maybe uh, maybe 10 months later. So it's not that maybe the, we exchanged numbers. I don't know. But the words that she said that day, you know, really changed my orientation because the chain was a gift. It's not that maybe I'm a chain person, but the chain was a gift. So I just put it on and that she said it made made me look like a Casanova. I said, hey, I don't want such <laughs> and then of course you know, that was the first time. And then um after ten months we met again in another program and then of course we started talking a little. Then the day came when I had God tell me that she's the one. Eh? <laughs> I was like, no, because she has so many principles, like, you know, <laughs> they are, no, you know, it's not possible. And I was like, I summon of courage and I spoke with a few people before I spoke with her. And when I, I spoke with a few people, getting some people involved, senior people, and then I, got, I spoke to her and then, um, one thing worthy of note was that she wrote in her diary when she was 10 years old, God showed her 
my own picture. So she had written everything down how I was going to look like and when she was 10. So when I came, it was very easy because she just brought the diary and said, Look at the kid, look at this, look at that, and all that. You know, this is when she was 10. And because of that, she never had any ex because she was just waiting that this person with this um, qualifications and all that would come around. So she never had an ex, she was never into any relationship and all that. So I feel that this could help, you know, the coming generation because um, um, there's a saying that says the purpose of the thing is not known. He said abuse is inevitable. Um, anything goes for people who, who are not purposeful. I keep saying that just to admonish the, the, the coming generation because she already knew. She already, um, she already knew God's plan for her life and, and all that. She was able to do it. I am a kingdom star. I was called to reign on now. Ministry in the world of life. To the weak to give them strength, to the blind to make them see, through cries of strength in me. I am something, I am a light, a royal priest to lonely nation, a hero of God, so call me kingdom time. I am something, I am a light, a royal priest to lonely nation, a hero of God. He has promised me to be my shield, my dwelling place, and my help. I will wait on him till the end and carry his glory everywhere. He has promised me to be my shield, my dwelling place, and my help. I will wait on him. Till the end and carry his glory around.